How are you all doing, Ralphie here, Ralphie Customs? Still not made it to the fucking barbers? It's vlog time! So, I've been doing more milling, um, I did a video on making this uh, mill vice stop. I've actually got a smaller vice coming because it's too fucking bulky. It's a lovely vice, um, but it's too bulky, so I've ordered the slightly smaller one. What I'm doing today is working on these stops, look, let me take you underneath. These stops allow you to set the X travel so you can repeat, you can go a certain distance and stop obviously that's what I call stops um, and there's two components, well three, but there's two bus ends that slide along the uh, slot here and they're held in with these little T-nuts, sorry, T-bolts that are machined to size I didn't video any of this and I made these little brass stops like a t-spacer thing whatever and they they sit on there and you move them along now they need to hit something there needs to be a stop on the bed so there's already two little o's there and i'm going to make a plate that comes up and catches on the brass bits so you wind across as far as you want to go and then you put this stop there and then you won't go past that. Wonderful, saves a lot of grief. You can use them for lots of things, setting up. You can put thickness gauges in between them, so you know you're doing a certain width, etc., etc. Um, and what I'm on with now is, I've got a brand new 10 mil carbide cutter. I brushed up on my speeds and feeds because milling's not me, uh, Forte, I'm more of a lathe man, but this is so intriguing that I can't leave it alone. And I've just taken um, a light cut off this bit of stock. It's not showing up very well. I'll try and focus it. I'm struggling with the lighting. I'm fucking about with the lighting. Look, I've got a work lamp set up there. I've got this LED lamp set up there. Um, I'm hoping that that kind of works, but I don't think it will. Anyway, I'm going to machine the four sides of this to make it square and to size, skim the faces, maybe put a step in. I've got one of my super accurate drafts look. This is my sketch I'm working to, but it's all kind of a muchness, you know, it's, it's nothing's fixed, uh, no pun intended. And we're gonna go from there. Also on the cards today, fucking hell, I've not put the TIG away from uh, having the lathe out to fit the DRO. I don't know if it's still the short, but I've finally got me high, uh, sorry, low voltage lamp working. Look at that bit of vintage shit, look. Works on 50 volts. There's a transformer down there, look. And that uh, goes from 400 down to 50. Fucking 400. Anyway, that's fucking wonderful. Again, I don't know how it's going to help filming. Hopefully, it'll be good because it's a nice, soft but quite bright light all at the same time. It's not too harsh like the LEDs. Um, and we've got a DRO. But it's only got one scale working because we've not got one for the X-axis. It was too big. It's gone back. Smaller one's coming. We've got one for the Y-axis, so. There we go. We've got all this. I just need to get it set up and learn how to use it. But I digress. What I'm also doing today is Johnny's sandal bars. I don't know if you followed me doing the uh, headlamp bracket, which has worked really well. Next on the agenda is his sandal bars. We've uh, trimmed out the existing centerpiece that fit fitted them together here, and we need to make them 37 inches. Is it? 
Yeah, that's my note, look. So I'm gonna make a piece to fit in the center, put them on a jig and pull them apart 37 inches. That's today's jolly. And finally, I need to do a bit more Nicky's trike. Um, it's been a week since I stuck my finger in the sander. And if you saw the pictures that I put up on a post, but there's all this grinding that needs cleaning off with the sander. And then we can look at mounting the seat and doing some tubing. So that's what we're doing today. Okay, so I've already done a, a pass to kind of clean it up, but I'm gonna just run that carbide over it again. Um, I'm running at 700, which is probably a bit slow, but it's starting to get a bit of vibration, so I don't want to push the envelope too much, you know what I mean? I'll give that a lighter skin anyway. It's just doing a, a fifth of a metal, 0 0.20. And that's cutting nice, but I'm getting a bit of shaky shaker. Let's see if I can't alter the settings. Um, apart from making what I'm making, part of this is to suss the camera action because I'm struggling. It's, uh, it's not quite what I intended. Look, zoom in, zoom out. It's too grainy. Let me have a chop and change and see what I can come up with. Okay, so. Put a bit of white there, see if that helps in the background. And I've altered the settings a bit for a bit of a fuck about. I forgot the, the light on the, the camera is on. So that might help. But we'll take a second pass anyway. It's not getting the job done, is it? Lolly gaggling about the settings on the camera. Just take it. Look at that shape, look. That's no good. And so we go, I'm sure I can run that cutter a fuck of a lot faster. Okay, so now that we've run across the nice finishing pass, we can take that out. Um trying to show you that if it'll focus, bear with. Anyway. Yeah. We can turn that round twice, look, because we know that the bottom edge is parallel, is straight that will become our first straight edge and we'll square this one up to it but we'll also take it down to size which my uh, super duper architectural draftsman skills show is about 36 mil so i'm going to measure off and mark 36 mil and we're going to work down to the line um, and then we need to try and keep that square so i'm going to flip it 90 degrees i'm going to move it over to the edge of the vice that you can't see very clearly in this shot and I'm going to use a square or some means of making it a square. Easy peasy, isn't it? So I'll go and mark that off camera. You've seen people marking steel, fuck's sake. And then I'll take a cut. Okay, with well, the two sides made parallel to each other, we need to get a third side square. And if I had a smaller vice, I could square off the bed or put some uh, gauge blocks or a 321 block or something similar. 123 block, even. Ted Rogers. Where's Dusty Ben? What I'm going to do, I'm going to use the square side of the uh, vice jaws and I've simply got a straight edge, in this case a little square, and I've pushed against it. It actually wants to sit with a gap at the top, so it's actually like that. Um, what I'm going to do is push it too far, push it back, and then push against this to make sure I'm square. Hold that in place and just tweak the vice a little and then double check that. So we square, there's no gap, slight gap there, so we need to just tap that in a little bit and no gap there and that will make a square and that will give us a nice square edge. Now it's time to uh, machine that step. I decided to go for just a millimetre step. We'll do that and then we'll give the rest of the surface uh, a quick once over and then that side's done following that I'm going to flip it over and I'm just going to run a fly cutter over it not that we need that level of finish but while well, I've got it here I may as well give it a go well we've finished it getting better light I don't know what it is for me today in focus um, there's a little score there where it's picked up a bit of something when it was fly cutting 
no idea, but a through pass has given me a lovely finish. Um, I did have to hone the, the tip a little bit, and I've drilled through and countersung, and I can't get it to focus to save my life, so. We'll get that fitted, and that's that one done. So in practice, as we're winding the x-axis across, it will touch on one of those brass stops and tell us to stop, yeah? So it acts like a, a stop, <laughs> like a brake. So we can repeat that X cross travel uh, whenever we need to, which is awesome. So there we go. That's X axis stops on the uh, mini mill. Now we're on to how John's handlebars. I like two halves of them. And I know that we need to make the ends 37 inches apart. So we've got a shop made jig um, set at the centre of 37 and a half. And we've marked up halfway from the end of the bench uh, both sides and prescribed a line and then we set this on centre. We've made sure it's the same distance from the uh, edge of that to the edge of the bench. We're going to clamp the bars on, move them until the 37 apart, which is this line and the edge of the bench, and then make a little piece to put in the middle. So, so there we go. Seems a quick freshen up. That's the old bad tap, boys clumped up. We can tell as well uh, that they're level because they're both touched, the to touched down like at the same time. Um, we've checked the width, width's bang on. We know this is square. So we're there. We just need to make a piece up to uh, fill this gap, to hold them in place. It had a curved piece, which I quite liked. Uh, originally, so let's get a bit of inch and a quarter bent up um, and trimmed and welded in place. So we bent that piece and what I'm trying to do is follow the angle of the bars. Ooh, you can't hold it very well with one hand and film it. But it's going to flow, so we can, we can put it into place. So it flows with the underbars, and then we can mark it up ready for chopping out, notching, and tacking it in place. They're all welded up now. We'll let them cool down um, and then we'll give them a clean up and get them fitted back on. <laughs> 